Hello and welcome to the 18th video of my how to build a 4-bit computer series inside Minecraft. Um, in the last video I think I finished off this decoder for the program counter um, so uh, when the program is cycling it outputs a binary number which is then turned into a decimal using this decoder that then jumps on the program each time each clock cycle. So now we have finished the ALU, the RAM, uh, the input registers, uh, the screen, uh, the ROM, which is the program memory, um, the counter, the counter decoder. Um, I think we've just about done anything apart from the user input. So in this video, I think that's what I'll do. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what? The first thing you need to do before we can start building it is find exactly the middle of your screen. Um, I've already done this planning ahead in advance. So yeah, once this has happened, uh, once this has happened, once this has been done, just uh, wow, that's pretty noisy. Uh, <laughs> once that's happened, not once that's happened, once that's once you've done that, take this out uh, to a suitable distance. It doesn't really matter where, and just make sure. You remember that's the middle, so uh, I'm just going to colour code it a different colour. Uh, a nasty pink, so I won't forget. What? Ah, there we go. Okay, so the pink represents the middle block, and if I stand here like that, I can see my hole on my screen, which is good. So around this, we need to build a floor. Um, I'm making this up as I go along, so bear with it, please. Okay, six back, I think we'll do fine. Uh, I need to think now. Okay, this is a four bit computer, so we need what we're going to have on the user input. Hmm. Okay, four, um, four switches for the different numbers. And then we're going to have an option to save to the first input register and save to the second input register. And that'll be our user input done. And then we need a lever for. Um, starting the clock, um, a clock indicator, and a lever for resetting the uh, what do you call it? Resetting the program counter. Uh, I think yeah, I can't, can't think of anything else which will need to be on there. Okay then. So, how many did I come out? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Alright, yeah, nine will do, I think. Um, yeah. So just build up the wall a few. Right, let's think about this. I'm gonna place out the levers for my uh, for the user inputs now. I'm gonna have user inputs on one side, so just four levers, and then um, the two buttons for saving to the registers. And then I think, um, yeah, I'll have all the rest of the different commands on the other side. So we require le lever and a few buttons. Oh, and some signs. I think, uh, yeah, that'll do. No, that's not what was meant to happen. Uh, get rid of my axe. <laughs> Okay, that doesn't work. A stupid fox will get. Okay, um, so that's the middle. Uh, one, eight, four, two, one. And yeah, we can have indicator lights for these. Uh, indicator lights below. And labels above it. So, um, so this will be our user input, the way of putting numbers into the computer to program with. And yeah, I might as well go and build this. So, just turn this on. I think that's right. Yeah, actually. Okay, how am I going to do this? Um, That won't work, will it? That'll be the opposite. Damn. <laughs> That's a pain. Uh, 
like that. Um, no. Like that. Down. There we go. Oh no, I wanted to... Ah. I'm being sick. Yeah, that is right. There we go, so... Thought it was easy. So, uh, when you flick the lever, it shows that it's on. If you can't really see that. Which, yeah. <laughs> I know I need to do the same for uh, the other ones. That was a very derpy moment. Okay, there we go. So, the indicator lights are done. And the labels are done. Um, okay, now to build the other side. So, first button is going to be safe to approach to A. Approach to B. Start the clock. Um, start and stop the clock. That will be that will be a T flip flop. Um, clock indicator. <sighs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, but then that's not. Hmm. Maybe look a bit uneven. Ah oh, well. Obviously, this can be a manipulated, I guess, to uh, suit anyone's need if they want something a lot fancier than this. I don't really care. Alright, so, safety and project A, B, um, start the clock, um, clock indicator, and reset program counter. Yep, that's a bit lopsided. Um, I know, I'll do something different. I don't need all of this. I'll have my clock indicator up there, I think. Or maybe in the middle. Um, no, that's going to interfere with those. Okay, there we go then, that's four buttons and four levers that look quite nice. In my opinion. I hope you lot agree. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so label these. Save to a input register. Pardon me. Save to b input register. Um, I'll just call this on off. Reset. Program counters counter. Okay. Um. Yes. And now, uh, yeah, let's keep it with blue for the floor. Just create yourself a floor. Ooh, this is boring. <laughs> wow, ten minutes already. At school, ten minutes would take half an hour to pass, while recording it takes about thirty seconds. Hmm. Okay. Uh. Oh, that doesn't look very nice. Oh no. Oh, close. It's okay. Oh, okay, we're gonna add one more line at the top. Oh yeah, because I probably I need to add my uh, the system for the color coding. Oh no, they're already labeled on the program memory. Yeah, never mind that. Ignore it, just ignore it. Camera Natalie is online. Jolly good. <laughs> um, okay, what to do now? The most obvious thing is to connect these up because these require little to no effort. Um. I want to do it so that it's kind of... Mm. Yeah, okay. What? One second. Check the Skype. I'm ready to record when you two are... One second. And one second, guys. Oh 
no, leave me alone. <laughs> Peoples are annoying me. Okay, um, I'm gonna add a whole. No, I'm not. I'm just going to bust this down and make it look a bit messy. Alright, so. Oh no, I didn't want that to start. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a pretty nasty way of doing things. Alright, spiral staircase. No, I could just have like a straight bus, I don't think that would look too bad. Underneath. Yeah, that'll do. Um Yeah that yeah. It's fine. Just take it out this way. Uh oh, now I need to find out where these buttons are. Okay. Is that right? Oh, it's one on the other side of that. Let's see. So, there, 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 and there. And this one is connected up to... This is going to be the on-off switch. This is going to be connected up to the third one. So, just... Wiry, wiry, wiry. Yeah, we're... Okay, so... Now we can just redstoneify, redstoneify this line. And as you all know, bussing is the devil itself. Okay. Um, ooh, this needs to have a T flip flop, doesn't it? Uh, which T flip flop design should I use? Okay, here. Um, yeah, need ability flip flop like this. Oh gosh, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, all right. This is a common T flop design. If you don't know what a T flip flop is, um, I'll just explain it now. <laughs> T flip flop is where you have. A button, e uh, button input or a pulse input, and the cell can remember. It effectively acts as a toggle. So you turn, it, uh, you press a button, it's and uh, that turns it on. You press it again and it turns it off. Kind of like a toggle switch. It's a way of turning a button into a uh, into a lever, I guess. Um. Okay. Like that. And that is that. Ooh, except this bit. Ah. Ooh. Okay, let's try that now. Okay, so what you want is um, a block underneath with a torch on it. And that needs to have a block on top of it. And then pistons arrange like so, with the blocks on top, torches on either side, and redstone above it. This he this thing here acts like a signal sharpener kind of thing, and it just speeds up the T flip flop. And then piece of redstone. All right, so now it's on that piece of redstone. Press the button, changes, and now it's outputting off like that. So that's working nicely. Just add repeaters and that will be done. Mm. Add one repeater. Okay, you can see it's cycling. Press it and it will stop cycling. Okay, now, uh, now we need to bus <laughs> this back up to the clock indicator, I think. Oh no, I'll do this one first. This is nice and easy. Just reset it. Uh, which one is that? Is that the one on the far side? Yeah, that's this one here. Mm. 
Mm. Bit of funky bussing. <laughs> No one will know. Okay, let's say uh, I'm just gonna try and bust them next to each other for neatness sake. <sighs> oh, this needs to have a pulse limiter on it. Oh no, it doesn't. It's a button to begin with. Ignore that. <laughs> Why did that have to be one out? Right, so um, actually, just. Oh no, that's fine. Never mind, mate. You just add redstone to this. Basically, we're just bussing up different functions to one control panel just to add ease of access and ease of use for the user. There we go, okay. Um, I'm just going to replace with the tar with the lever at the moment so I can add repeaters. And I would advise you to do the same. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm going too fast, guys, but it's not really complicated. It's just wiring stuff up how you want it. Um, and one more here. Okay. So that's two of them done. If I just flick this, if you sign the distance as piston extended and retracted, resetting the program counter. Um, now what? I think I'll leave it there for the time being. Um, we've got the basis of the user input done. You know what? I'll just add walls. And then that will do. Because. My OCD is kicking in, and having this finished in exactly 20 episodes would be pretty cool. Although, that's not entirely necessary. Okay, one wall done. Two walls done. No, kind of, almost. Yeah! One second. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm being requested somewhere else, so uh, I will finish it there. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And keep watching for the end of this series, which is very close. Adios.